Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Before we begin, Ledger is still having their 40% off sale on their website and I will explain to you in a little tiny bit why this is probably very important. Um, also, the fact that they usually never have a 40% off sale, which is also something quite massive. Thank you very much to everyone who has already used the link below. While this is not a paid sponsorship, I do not do those on this channel. I am an affiliate of Ledger and I have a link in the description below for people who want to get that 40% off on their Ledger. Uh, second part before we begin, I saw a couple of people in the comment section talking about that my link to my other channel didn't work and I was like, no, they're lying and of course it works and I clicked on it and it went to nowhere. Uh, thank you to like the 25 people who kept on saying that my link didn't work. I finally paid attention and I figured out it was giving me like a shorter hyperlink that had dots at the end of it. It didn't really make a lot of sense because it sent me nowhere. Uh, for those of you who were wondering, I do have a second channel. It's called Money Rules where I basically go over things about money and adjacent cryptocurrency, real estate, art buying and all this kind of other stuff. Um, yes, so the link has been updated there as well. First, I kept on seeing it and I was like, of course the link works. What are you talking about? Nope, didn't even slightly work and without further ado let's jump right into it because of course the news in the cryptocurrency space is always special it says the calm after the storm bitcoin at seventeen thousand as DeFi rebounds. so for those of you who were not here maybe you were simply sleeping for the last two or three days i don't blame you because this year has been a doozy bitcoin's price and the wider cryptocurrency market prices fell quite dramatically Bitcoin fell from, I think it hit 19,600, fell down to 19,200. We rested around 19,000. And then over the course of a 12-hour period, Bitcoin's price fell by uh, roughly around like a good $2,000. For those of you who are unaware, who are relatively new here, I will tell you right now, this is normal. I know it may not feel normal because you are used to hearing stuff about the stock market and it going down by 1% per day if something bad happens. Or maybe there's like a 6% rise over the course of a month. The cryptocurrency space is very new, not even relatively new. We've been around for 12 years. The other coins that you may see floating around as well have been around for five, six, four and a half, three years. So our prices are going to fluctuate quite a bit. This is just how the cryptocurrency market is. I'm going to tell you right now, if this is too much for your heart, too much for your brain, it is okay if you step out of the, the, the door space. It doesn't make any sense, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um... While we have huge upswings, we also have huge downswings. The, there's not really an issue. It's just kind of that's just how our market is. Uh, we have moments where prices need to correct, which I think is complete nonsense. But this is what the market keeps telling me, what all the articles keep saying. It's basically where if we get too hot too fast... Prices have to go down to test new to test lows to see exactly how low we are going to go before we start going back up once again. It appears at the moment that Bitcoin's low is 17,000, which is wonderful because if you paid attention to last two months ago, our low was $9,000. So 17,000 as a low after a good eight weeks is perfectly fine. Um, we are now getting discussions once again of Bitcoin having hit this low and where Bitcoin's price is going to be going over the next couple of days, if not weeks. It says technical analysis, how a double Bitcoin or double bottom could restart Bitcoin's rally above 17,500. It's only a matter of time. It's not a, um, oh gosh, Bitcoin fell. It's never going to go back up. It's a, well, let's figure out exactly when Bitcoin's going to stop falling because it's going to move back up again. That's just how the market works. This one says Bitcoin is eyeing 20,000 because excess dollar liquidity is still in system. Do not make the mistake in thinking that just because we fell down in price. This is, and so, and, and, I, and, I, and I understand the fear or the lack of knowing. And that's not me making fun of you or saying you should know more about the cryptocurrency space. Like, I get it. I was also brand new here for a certain amount of time or had only been in this space for a year. And you see things popping up and it doesn't make a lot of sense in your head. The entire idea behind Bitcoin is in the cryptocurrency space. But focusing on Bitcoin is that the world's economy is garbage. It's fractionalized. It's torn apart. We have separated people from being able to enter into the monetary system. And as our world's monetary system continues to crumble, Bitcoin gains more strength, not only because it is scarce and cannot be printed at will, like the euro, the dollar, and all these other things, but also it's inclusionary. Everyone is allowed and able to use it. 
and also the stuff happening this year that happened with 19 and all the, the money printing and yada, yada, yada. So whenever we get news, hear, 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 hear my words and heed my not warning. It's not a warning. It's more of a understand that whenever we hear stuff in the news that Bitcoin fell because of this, this website did this, this person said this, Mnuchin's going to do that. It doesn't really matter in the long term because we know that Bitcoin doesn't really react to these things. It's human reactions and it's human fear and it's the idea that other people are going to be afraid of something else that someone else said in the news that causes the prices to actually fall. When you look at Bitcoin's fundamentals, the amount of people who are mining the cryptocurrency, the miners that are keeping on their machines and turning them back on, the amount of people who are buying daily, it's important to realize, and I know this is going to sound weird, but I, I know this is how people think. Just because you live in a certain city, a certain state, a certain province, a certain country, you do not dictate what's going to happen to the cryptocurrency space and to Bitcoin's price. While crazy things may be happening within the states, Steve Mnuchin said something yesterday. This is why we, we believe that the market dropped a little bit because of the guy from Coinbase said what Mnuchin was supposedly going to say. The U.S. is not the entirety of the cryptocurrency space. This is why I've mentioned this before. There are many other countries who have 0% tax rates when it comes to cryptocurrencies and also like Switzerland. They've been making sure that they get all the crypto money going into their borders. So the entire point to be made here is Bitcoin is going to succeed because the monetary system that we have right now is not going to be fixed ever. It has to be replaced completely. It would take about a good 150 years to actually try and replace it. And this is why we see so many, have so many things in the news about uh, regulators trying to make sure that there's a, a door here and a door here and a door here because they're trying to figure out how to get control over something that they have no control over. Bitcoin will be just fine. It may have price dips. It's going to have price dips, but the price will ultimately continue rising because that's what it does. That's how it works. I have about a good 1,800 other videos if you want to go watch them to explain over the last three to four years this exact same discussion. This one says, uh, Stack Funds hails Bitcoin's healthy correction predicts euphoria ahead. We typically have this in the news uh, whenever there's like a, 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 a correction or Bitcoin's price has fallen is usually to test to see if it's basically how low we're going to go. If Bitcoin was at 9,000 and shot up to 19,400 and we fell back down to 9,000, well, there were no actual like strength levels that we actually passed to buy before. Um, it's kind of like a uh, let's see how low people will let Bitcoin go kind of thing, i.e., uh, would you buy Bitcoin or fractions of a Bitcoin at 19,400? About 30% would say, yes, maybe 70% would say, mm, that's kind of expensive for me. If you see that it hit 19,400 and Bitcoin falls back down to 12,000, would you buy Bitcoin? You probably have 60% going, yeah, probably 30% going, it's a little bit too expensive for me. If Bitcoin fell down to $4,000, we'd have a huge amount of people going, well, you know, I mean, it hit 19,000 before, I might as well buy in right now. And this is what we had earlier this year when a whole bunch of people were buying in because Bitcoin hit 3,000 something. So it's kind of, the market will be fine. I don't really know how else to say this. Uh... It's just something that takes place. If you're new here, if your friends are new here, if you've only been here for a year and have never really experienced any, it's not even a really crazy dip. Like we went up by $9,000, $10,000 over the course of eight and a half weeks. Like, you know, something, something's going to uh, take place. These rallies and drops will continue. Uh, it's going to be the scariest part. Like I mentioned before a couple of weeks ago when we actually have the crazy rally. This isn't even the crazy rally. When Bitcoin starts aiming towards 100,000, 150,000, people are going to be terrified, but it's all part of the game, if you kind of want to say it that way. This one says, record $7.4 billion of Bitcoin futures open interest shows pros still expect a $20,000 Bitcoin. The, 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 the rich and wealthy and institutional investors who got into the market don't think that the market's done. They're not like, well... <laughs> I mean, Bitcoin's clearly not going to go back up, right? You know, it's at 16,000. It just, it can't go back to 19 anymore. Everyone's expecting Bitcoin. There's a reason why all these, when, when all the banks put out the price predictions for $300,000, dollars i am pretty sure their graphs also showed dips. It's never a straight shot up. The same exact way with everything. When you're trying to start a business, 
It's not you, you start the business on a Tuesday and by Friday you're like, well, <laughs> let's move to Monaco. It takes a while. Everything takes a a bit to get moving. And I'm pretty sure that the the the, the mega money is still there because, you know, that's just logic. Uh, what does this one say? And it says, fund manager says, regulation rumors not likely to affect Bitcoin in long term. People forget a lot of stuff. People for, people forget what they had for breakfast. Do you remember what you had for breakfast yesterday? Probably not. And, and it's crazy because a lot of people, like, if you really think, try to remember what you had yesterday for breakfast. Try to remember the day before what you had for lunch. Now, go back a week. What did you last Friday have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Can't remember it. We've had so many times when we've had negative news within the cryptocurrency space. Prices fall, people get afraid. Six days later, no one remembers it. I will tell you right now, if by this weekend, Bitcoin goes back up to 17999 US dollars, you will have all forgotten that we even dipped in price or why we dipped in price. Because that's just how the mind works. Um, also, just something once again to keep in mind. Regardless of what happens within the United States or what Mnuchin might potentially say, uh, this may have an effect on the market, but just understand that the U.S. is not every other country. This is why whenever we get news about these crazy things that are happening within the cryptocurrency space in, in South America and Africa, all over Europe, Asia especially, um, it's because they're all moving forward even if something else hinders another space. Anyway, that's basically all the price news. It was basically people being like, it's fine, don't worry, the price is going to go back up and all this other stuff. There were many, 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 many articles once again discussing uh, XRP's price dropping as if the entire market dropped. I think I saw zero articles talking about Ethereum dropping, about Lumens dropping, about Cardano dropping. It was always just about XRP. As, as, and without further ado, let's move on to the even more ridiculous news. So, remember I said in the beginning, um, if you've been considering getting a a Lego a Lego Nano, uh, a Nano Ledger, um, why this might be the time? It says Coinbase users could experience intermittent delays or errors while transacting. Apparently, this is thanks to an Amazon Web Services outage. In its recently published incident report, Coinbase stated that it was investigating some connectivity issues on Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. Moreover, roughly 21 hours ago, give or take, on the 25th of November, the exchange said in its report that it was experiencing elevated error rates on some back-end systems due to an Amazon Web Services services outage in an earlier announcement coinbase had said Co coinbase had said wow coinbase mentioned that the trading <laughs> that trading on the platform was not being impacted however this statement was removed from the update which instead instead went on to state that users could encounter intermittent why is it difficult for me to say inter intermittent 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 delays or errors while transacting so um as you might have imagined or guessed there have been in the past many instances where people trying to use Coinbase have been told that there were errors or server outages or too many people on the platform and the platform had gone down. We heard recently, a couple of days ago, that people were trying to trade Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on Coinbase or Coinbase Pro, wherever they decide to do it, and that it had gone down and people had lost money as the outage ended and people had gone back onto the platform but the price had already dipped. This seems to be a constantly recurring um, event. Uh, this one says Coinbase goes down again as Bitcoin price action volatility heat up again. I was having a discussion, here we go, with my friend yesterday in New York discussing the incidents of Coinbase going down repeatedly, allegedly, I do not use Coinbase. But I've, I've been hearing many whispers, more like screams on the internet about this. And we kept on saying how weird it was, repeatedly, back and forth, me and him, that Binance doesn't go down, OKEX doesn't go down, Huobi isn't going down, Kraken isn't going down. But for some reason, Coinbase is usually 
the website that continues to go down and have these outages. Part of the problem is, is that Coinbase is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet. I believe it might be the largest within the United States. And every single time that we have this news, it's always Coinbase goes down and Bitcoin's price tends to follow. Or as Bitcoin's price is going up and or down, Coinbase happens to shut off. We had speculation earlier this year about a, what was it? Like a circuit breaker kind of thing. I don't know if Coinbase implemented it. I remember we were discussing this, but I don't remember the actual implications of it. Uh, was that, was there a circuit breaker somewhere behind the scenes being turned on and off the same exact way? If the stock market is going down by too much during a the day, they'll hit the circuit breaker, everything will go down and they go, oh, that's trading for today, come back tomorrow, hoping that, you know, spirits will be lifted higher the next day. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the sixth, seventh, or eighth time this year that this has happened on Coinbase. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the number, sixth, seventh, or eighth time. I thought earlier this year, around April when this happened again, uh, that they would have gotten it together. This is a very big issue. If an outage on one website has the potential to drag down an entire market, that looks like a really big problem. A lot of people recently, especially on the interwebs, have been announcing that they've been, they've been having a lot of issues with said particular website. And I'm going to say this once again. If you are legally in your country able to move your coins without any repercussions, I would take the time out of your day to sit there and think if you should maybe start moving your coins to a different platform or to a platform that you trust a little bit more. Because I feel like this is going to be a very big problem, especially with the news that we received yesterday from the CEO of Coinbase, who announced that he heard from someone else that Steve Mnuchin might give more stringent regulatory, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on U.S. cryptocurrency exchanges. This might affect you as well. So, um, once again, if you are legally able to do so, I would do so now, because I think it would be burdensome to you in the future. Imagine trying to cash out and you can't because the platform has collapsed, crashed, gone offline and you see the money that you would have made drop down to here. You would not be too happy. Imagine if these rules and regulations do come to, <laughs> almost said come to be birthed, <clears throat> do come to be and you are then required to add your cryptocurrency wallet where you're trying to cash out of it's 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 too much for it's for, for 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 the mind to actually think about so um when i heard yesterday that coinbase had gone get down uh again i was like listen this is going to cause a very big problem if bitcoin passes by 20,000 and it goes down and bitcoin's price goes down people are going to be angry if Bitcoin's price is looking like it's hitting 45,000 US dollars and we're nearing that trillion dollar market cap, and Coinbase goes down, it's going to make a lot of people very angry. If we get to a point where Bitcoin, it, it's, I could keep going on forever, but you kind of get the, the point. This one says, Bitcoin stored on exchanges falls to two year low. I, I entirely understand why. I have taken nearly everything I own off of exchanges. I have fractions of fractions on some exchanges as a what if. Should something happen to the other things I own, I still have a fraction of these things on a website. Just in case prices do skyrocket, I lose everything else. I still have a sliver of something so I can be like, woof, at the end of the day. Um, Bitcoin is being taken off of exchanges because many exchanges are not that good. And I think it would be good for all of us if people learned how to custody their own crypto with ledgers, any other way that you decide to simply do it. Because, yeah, I hope you hear the intensity in my voice because this is only going to continue happening. And I do not want you to be affected by the nonsense that I know is going to happen within the cryptocurrency space. A lot of people also just choosing to take their stuff off of cryptocurrency exchanges because, you know, logic. What does this one say? 
Um, oh yeah, also tying into this slightly loosely. It says, OKEX's crypto assets are quickly flowing into Huobi and Binance after its opening to withdrawal today. Uh, there was a, th I'm not mistaken, I think OKEX was the cryptocurrency exchange where one of its CEOs or one of its head members was taken into custody uh, by local authorities. They said they had to question him, but I think that questioning lasted for about a good two months or something like that. And I think they just reopened their platform to be able to take money off. Of it's, I don't understand why people are okay. It's not being afraid. Like, we keep getting news like this from different cryptocurrency exchanges where this one messes up. You have to take your money off of it and put it onto that one. This one messes up. Put it onto that one. Put it onto that one. Put it onto that one. Wouldn't you feel a lot safer if you just had your cryptocurrency somewhere near you in a ledger or on another laptop or something like that? Because... I do still personally believe that sometime in the future, a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges are going to go down, and I don't mean in like Amazon Web Services kind of thing. I mean more like a uh, local regulators are not going to ban Bitcoin. They are, however, going to make sure that um, cryptocurrency exchanges that are the most regulated will flourish the most. And anything else that hasn't flourished or hasn't bent the knee to the government to say, yes, please regulate us, uh, will eventually go down, be told that they have to shut down, what have you, so on and so forth. So anyway, that's all the cryptocurrency exchange news, I think, at least, maybe, not sure. The point is, pay attention to not only where your crypto is, but also to the coins that you own. Can only say it so many times. Let's move on. Next up, in... I'm not sure why this is news news. This was quite popular. Not not as <laughs> you're going to see what what was the most popular, but this was also still quite popular. It says now um, Ripple is looking for a chief economist to help craft a strategy for the company's massive XRP holdings. Ripple currently owns around 54 billion XRP, which is more than half of the total supply. In December 2017, they announced that they would be locking up the coins into an escrow, that they would only have a fraction of it that would be available to them every single month. Um, apparently, they're now looking for someone with a PhD in economics who's a demonstrated thought leader in terms of applying innovative approaches to economic thinking. They said, in this role, you will study the market dynamics in cryptocurrency, particularly within XRP's market. You will apply your robust knowledge of monetary policy and macroeconomic principles to develop strategies regarding management of Ripple's XRP holdings. I don't have to read the rest of it. Remember like about a week and a half ago, I said, listen, I forgot what we were reading, but I said it, it, it kind of came to me. I have a very, sh I have an inkling that Ripple, this is, this is all speculation. This is me speculating. Remember the news that we got from Ripple saying that they were thinking of leaving the United States? I think that's because not only have they not received regulatory insight, approval, whatever, for XRP, I think in general they probably see that the, that the world is moving further ahead in cryptocurrencies than maybe the place where they are currently located. The other part was I said, I have a very strange feeling that they've probably figured out a loophole to get around the entire... Um, you own too much XRP thing. I, and, and I can't really figure out exactly what it is. And I'm pretty sure this is why they say, you know, the regarding the management of XRP, the fact that they hold so many XRP tends to be a bit of an issue for them being labeled as a security or people saying they're not decentralized enough. I have a feeling, and that's like the eighth time I've said it, what they're probably going to end up doing is the, the billion that comes out of escrow every month, I wonder if they're able to simply take that billion and transfer it to London. Next month, transfer a billion to Tokyo. Next month, transfer a billion to South Africa, wherever they have other offices. Or like, not subsidiaries, but like other like under companies. So like you may have another company called Spring, which isn't then Ripple, who then holds that billion. And then that's how you make sure that they end up holding less than the... You understand what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like that's coming because... The idea of them holding so much, I'm pretty sure, is also burdensome to them. But also, in general, I'm sure that they do want to hold this much because if the price ends, if, if, if XRP ends up going to, to $10, $15 per coin, of course, they're going to be quite wealthy, so they want to do that. Anyway, um, yes, this was very popular news. And I, <clears throat> it's not that I don't understand why, but for some reason, we always get a lot of news about like this company hiring this person. And I'm like, yay, I love hiring people. So they're figuring out how to 
make more money and oversee the the billions of XRP that they own. Logic, I assumed it was going to happen at some point. Eh, without further ado, let's move on. Yeah, that was quite popular there. Um, all right, here we go. Here's the news. I, I, I tried to avoid it. I really tried. I, no matter what I did, it was like punching me in the face over and over. It says, limited Facebook's Libra may be launching in January. Facebook-led digital currency project Libra is preparing to launch as a single coin backed by one for one by the U.S. dollar as early as January. This was said by the Financial Times, citing three undisclosed people involved in the initiative, which means that it's going to happen. For those of you who don't know, whenever we in the cryptocurrency space, or especially on this channel, whenever so we, we always get some news. It's always like, is that news real? And then they always say like three undisclosed people or people, you know, standing in the background who told them this news who didn't want to be identified. The news always ends up being true. It's the weirdest thing in the entire world. I don't really know why it keeps happening, but it's always three undisclosed people. The other currencies and the composite will be rolled out at a later point. The report said, adding that the exact launch date would depend on when the project receives approval to operate as a payment service from the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority. So, without having to really go too deep into this, regulators do not like Facebook. And regulators did not like the fact that Facebook was like, hey, I think we're going to become the biggest bank in the world. They jumped down Facebook's throat immediately and they were like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't. So and so, here's the actual article right here that was quoted or spoken about from the Financial Times. I can't show you any more of it because the Financial Times always wants me to pay for their platform. Um, here's the article from 2019 that I'm referencing, where in two, th I think at the beginning of 2019, somewhere around there, Facebook announced that they were going to be launching a, a digital currency called Libra. Everyone was like, woo, that's crazy. Wait, that sounds like garbage. Regulators did not like it. What ended up happening was by summertime, his regulators said, this cannot launch. We will not let this launch. What we're going to do is you can launch this if you are a stablecoin. So the idea was that Libra was going to be a stablecoin that was going to be backed by gold, Swiss francs, and a whole bunch of other stuff. People within the United States did not care for this. So the agreement that came to be was that, hey, we can launch the Libra coin. We're also going to launch a Libra US dollar, a Libra euro, a Libra pound, a Libra yen. As it says on the screen, Facebook says Libra could use a series of cryptocurrencies pegged to different currencies. So this is exactly what I think this is going to be, that they're going to that they are allowed to finally launch Libra, but it's just going to be another tether. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is this is still going to be big. Once Facebook has a currency on their platform, people are still going to use it. It says that it is going to be uh, rolled out initially. Um, including, it says United States and Latin American countries as they are um, high volume remittance corridors. So tons of money is constantly passing back and forth. Um, yeah, that's the news. Facebook's Libra could reportedly arrive in January 2021 as a scaled down version. Facebook's Libra to reportedly launch in 2021 as a stablecoin. And Libra plans dollar peg stablecoin launch in January 2021. So What's going to end up happening is that they're going to launch the US dollar one, and then I assume by April the euro one will launch, and then the pound one will launch, and then by the December 2021, we should have every single Libra stablecoin, and maybe even that point uh, Libra by itself. But this is why we have governments who are actively rushing towards creating their own central bank digital currencies, because Facebook is going to take over. Facebook is far too large and has too far of a reach across multiple platforms. That if they allow people to use these coins on their platform, people are going to choose to use them over anything else. All it takes is an incentive. Uh, I mentioned this before. <clears throat> All it takes is because the, 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 I think the 30 companies who announced that they would be um, Libra, um, what's the word? Currency? Computations. Money. Validators for transactions. Wow. A uh, lot... <laughs> Validators for Libra transactions on the network were like, um, it was Lyft and Uber and all these other major companies. So all you have to do is announce that if you use the Libra coin, you get a 15% discount. What do you think people are going to do, especially at a time right now when a lot of people don't even have jobs? Of course, it's going to fuel that market. Anyway, yeah, that's the news. 
is that Libra is going to launch with a US dollar stablecoin in January. So I assume we'll see some fireworks from that as well because the news has been for a while that Libra's wallet is going to be comprised of multiple currencies and I assume the the initial ones will be Libra, US dollar, blah, 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 blah. Is that eventually they plan on implementing or having a section for Bitcoin as well on their wallet as a digital currency payment method. So uh, if we get news by spring of next year, then not only is Libra going to launch, but part of their wallet from the speculation that we've been receiving is going to have a Bitcoin focused area. That's uh, it's if if you think PayPal had a, it had a crazy effect, just imagine the largest social media platform being like, hey, all three billion of you can now use Bitcoin as well. Anyway, that's the Facebook news. And let's move on. In the final news story that I tried to get away from, but I really, really couldn't. Like, it's just like I, I I'll see news news stories sometimes, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I and I keep finding like 38 more versions of it, and I'm like, why is some of this news so popular? Um, Russia's prime minister Mikhail Mishustin has proposed certain actions uh, to regulate crypto in their country. Part of what the prime minister proposed legal pr- pr- projections. For Russians who own cryptocurrencies, uh, he asked that the government recognize crypto as a property under the nation's tax code. This means the country has aimed to amend the tax code to recognize crypto as properties. Um, Sure. I don't know what it is. Maybe, Maybe it's because I think any type of news about regulation maybe gets the market going or people get a little more optimistic as to where things are going to go. Uh, We've heard thousands of news stories from Russia about cryptocurrency regulation within their borders. What the news that we've gotten before, and I'm pretty sure this is what's going to happen. The the, the initial news was that it's banned, and then it wasn't banned, and then you, you can only use it if you're rich, and then you can only use some of it if you're slightly rich, and then it became uh, everyone can use it except for really poor people, and then it became if you are wealthy, you can use it without having to uh, tell authorities that you're using it, but I and then. It became, you have to tell us what you're doing, and then that if you're not a rich person or an institutional investor, you can only, I think, handle $3,000 equivalent of it per year. And then that switched to something else, and then it switched to one more thing. I'm going to assume that the people in their economics cabinet or with finance or whatever um, probably understand that, that the future is going to be crypto heavy. So um, they're, fi- they're trying to figure out ways to tax it and probably not tax it that heavily. Because the only people who are really going to benefit from this within their borders are going to be incredibly rich people. So I'm sure, me, that they've been told, them, uh, by some of the richest people in their country, hey, we're going to make really big money off of this. Make sure it's not banned. And they go, cool, we're not going to ban it. We have to tax it. Cool, make sure the tax is really low. I'm going to assume that that property is taxed a bit lower than um, than currency or any other thing that they might be swapping out of, especially if they have a long-term tax rate for holding property like many other countries do. Of course, it is going to benefit the, the richest in their country. <clears throat> it's just more of a, I'm not really sure why this always makes the news all the time. It's kind of like there was also news about India, which I also decided not to have inside of here because I knew it was going to be ridiculous. For the, India has been the same exact route. We're going to ban it. We don't like it. It's okay. It's fine. It has to go away. You can use it if you're this. You can't use it if you're that. You can use it if you're a company. No, we're going to ban it again. And it keeps going over and over and over. And the articles that I said, it was like eight articles that that were talking about India this morning. And it was mainly saying that people within their country would like to have some regulatory clarity. Really? That's insane. Why would people want that? It's because the government doesn't actually care. The governments are still trying to figure out a way to control everything. And even more so, the worst part, and I know this is going to happen. This is the absolute worst part is that governments know exactly what regulations they have to put in place. Like, they're not confused. Like, they, they know exactly what they have to do, but they're making sure that it just benefits them. How much do you want to bet that behind the scenes, speculation? Not only are a lot of countries who keep saying that they're, you know, another month, we're going to regulate, another, another six months, just calm down, six months, it's fine. That behind the scenes, they're buying up tons of cryptocurrencies and telling their citizens that they can't own it. So by the time their citizens can own it, 
The, the coins are already too expensive for them to even think about being able to buy. And then guess who are the people who profited from all of this once again? Another another Occupy Wall Street thing kind of situation going on. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's kind of like even this year. Did you see that while every... Listen, you know how economically ridiculous this year has been, even as far as people losing their jobs and uh, all the other stuff I, I, I didn't even have to mention. The richest people on the planet became even richer as people lost their jobs, didn't have any unemployment, got one stimulus check. This world is ridiculous, and I, and I know that this is where it's leading up to. This is why I mentioned before, and I've mentioned many other times. I know that the future is just, and I know this, it's going to be the haves and the have-nothings. You are currently in a very good position where you have figured out that the cryptocurrency space is ripe for the taking, and you can profit from it. I don't really know how else to kind of say that. It's clear that cryptocurrencies are the future. It's clear that Bitcoin is going to be the future. If you disagree with me, listen, in 10 years, we'll come back here and we'll have a little coffee tea break and we'll discuss exactly which coin actually made it. Just understand that if the world is indeed shaping to be a Bitcoin-centric cryptocurrency digital space, the people who are outside of this space, the, the billions of people who do not know about it and have been told by their countries don't get into it because it's dangerous. Don't forget all the other rich people who were like, it's rat poison squared. It's only for ladies of the night and all these other things, which they've all said. And now all these people are into cryptocurrencies. Anyway, um, the world is ridiculous. Just make sure that you keep your head down. You focus on your own money. You accumulate as much as you can within your means don't sell you know money that would go to like baby diapers or like to like the the gas in your car or something you know you get what i'm saying anyway oh boy this world is ridiculous let's move on as always a very special i should actually open it first wait wait for it a very special thank you to my patreon supporters professor wally from gunbite university conan don't skip leg day <laughs> snacky chan tolik banana auspicious agile and blockchain Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Moher Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight, Owl 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien Set, Suna, Richie Wish III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mon, Jelavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jamie Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to crypto. Body make boat face anytime fitness. <clears throat> Monks Corner staff. Arf Medic 17. Bake me a cake. Tigera Machonisa. On crypto with Lionel. Crayola Michelle. URL and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you to everyone who has purchased a ledger using my affiliate code. And thank you to everyone for supporting the channel in your own way. You are very much appreciated. At the moment bitcoin is currently at 16,857 us dollars it is down by 1.99% it is roughly around this trend line somewhere around here <clears throat> all the other coins have followed the dips the exact same way i follow the upward movement we'll see what happens we're also getting into the weekend and the weekend's always a good 70 30 sometimes the market pushes up during the weekend in anticipation of something that may happen next week and sometimes it's kind of lull it kind of continues going sideways with no real direction. XRP is currently up by 2.53%. Not really sure why, but maybe something behind the scenes has happened. I, I still, listen, I'm still speculating that at some point, sorry for screaming, like I'm like screaming into the microphone. I still expect at some point, speculation, that we are going to hear news from PayPal adding new coins, and XRP is going to be considered in that batch. The people from uh, PayPal, of course, understand I assume they'll probably end up adding a good portion of, of the top 10 coins. And if we get news about that within the next couple of weeks, XRP's price is probably going to completely lose its mind because that's just how it works. Lumens is up by 13%. I guess still off of the news of the upgrade. <clears throat> There's been no Lumens or Stellar IBM news. So I I mean, I'm not sure why the rally is continuing so so strongly, but they've passed by BSV. So they got my vote. That's all that really matters. Um, hopefully, you know, USD passes it because BSV, Bcash, and Bcash ABC shouldn't even be in the top 1,000 of coins. 
Um, wrapped Bitcoin is also constantly moving up. It was number 16 yesterday. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point it's going to be like coin number nine, especially I think if Bitcoin's price ends up exploding. Anything else interesting? I know some of the DeFi coins are also popping up. Um, Ave is up by 5%. Urine Finance is up by 19 Waves is up by almost 5%. Anything else? Nope. Uh, Kusama is up by 8%. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning. Today's Friday. Is it Friday? Today's Friday. Have a wonderfully spectacular Friday. Man, it's just, it's 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 so weird. Like the, it's not mood swings within the cryptocurrency space, but it's always like trying to figure out ways of really maintaining all of the not the order. I have no idea what I'm really trying to say. Like, there's some days that are, like, super euphoric, and then when things go down a little tiny bit, people really panic. I have a couple of friends, hello to you out there if you're watching, uh, who were panicking when prices were dropping. And I, I think I was sitting there eating yogurt or something like that. And I, I had, like, 15 messages on my phone for people being like, should I sell? What's going on? What's happening? Why is Bitcoin dropping? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Why, why is Bitcoin dropping? It's just kind of, I think I'm just used to it because I know how the markets work. You'll get it as well, I promise you. Give it like three years. These drops won't even really affect you. I, I do feel like it's a bit of my job to let all of you know why things dropped, why they're going to go back up and where the market currently stands just because it's 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 all cyclical. It's always doing the exact same thing over and over. We skyrocket up, we fall by a little bit, people get kind of depressed, the prices go back up, it's more euphoria, it just keeps going back over and over. Um... Just wait for the big drop. That's really going to, not even ruffle feathers, is going to be shaking the whole turkey. Because when we end up hitting $125,000, when, and Bitcoin's price drops back down to 98000 people are going to lose it. People are going to lose their minds because they're not really going to understand. Like markets don't go up forever. Our market at some point is going to be extremely stable. But we have a good... 10 years before that happened, so before that, just go along for the ride. I Like I said in the beginning, I, I know it can be a bit much, but um, there will be payoff. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and for listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See?